Welp, here we go, last episode. Most of the season has been completely uncharted territory for me, and I honestly have no idea what to expect with a title like that. Certainly not walruses. I suppose we're in for a real treat. Some Stratovipers are attempting to build an antenna, but the Joe Cold Weather team, consisting of snow job, iceberg, um, freeze frame, cold snap, frost berg, Hey, come on, I haven't done this gag in like 50 episodes. Indulge me one last time, won't you? Also, I guess I've never talked about the Stratovipers and their weird text display goggles. The messages are almost always misspelled, so I guess this was just an early form of texting. Take that, people who send text messages. During the fighting, Cross Country plays some country music and then his radio gets blown up. Man, those televipers make Cross Country mad, but anybody who hates country music can't be all bad. Man, Roadblock, you're still great after all this time. I hope you never end up being blinded by a weird snake monster. Well, I don't know where that thought even came from. As Cross Country replaces his radio, the old one is stolen by this robot rat lizard monster thing. So if you were hoping for a quiet, dignified finale, maybe you're watching the wrong show. Turns out a bunch of stuff around Joe HQ has gone missing. Cross Country in particular seems really upset about it, and he quickly discovers the robot rat lizard monster so he can get the plot moving. Dude, you have terrible taste in music, and you never even tried to have a southern accent, but I appreciate you for this, if nothing else. He follows the thing through the air ducts and then outside, where it's joined by several more. Oh sure, you know that old saying, you never have just one robot rat lizard monster. Then they lead him through the sewers into some kind of caves where your standard cartoon slave labor, complete with raggedy clothes and those classic cartoon shackles, are laboring towards some as-yet-unrevealed end. And oh look, it's this guy! Greetings! Hi! And welcome to the First Congress of the Secret Society of Cobra. Oh, hey, it's another Cobra Commander plot to overthrow Serpentor. I love this crap. Cross Country is discovered by some Dreadnoughts, which was a stressful sentence until you get to the Dreadnought part. But then some Stratovipers get into the mix, and maybe he actually is in a little bit of danger after all. He evades them for a while, then falls right in front of Destro like an idiot, and maybe Destro's gonna shoot him in the face, but at least he's found his dumb tape deck, because I guess you can't fight Cobra without subjecting all your teammates to achy breaky heart or whatever. Yeah, I know that song wasn't out yet, but Cross Country's putting off a real Billy Ray Cyrus vibe to me. Meanwhile, Serpentor is starting to think something's up, because I guess every Cobra troop has abandoned him to go to work for Cobra Commander, which I'd think would defeat the purpose of a secret society, but I'm also not the five-dimensional chess player that Cobra Commander is, so I'll sit back to see where this is all going. Presumably all of that junk they stole from the Joes also figures into this plot somehow. Back in the caves, Cross Country is eventually caught. Meanwhile, the Joes are having a very important meeting about all their missing knickknacks, which checks out because both General Hawk and Sergeant Slaughter are in this one. Well, I can see that G.I. Joe isn't recruiting for intelligence. Took the words right out of my mouth, man. Cross Country escapes and then sets off a booby trap that helps him escape faster. Maybe Cobra Commander should start recruiting for intelligence because whoever designed this thing didn't really think it through. He does punch a shark at one point, which is pretty cool, I guess. Then he swims to a lighthouse, which he kind of cleverly uses to send G.I. Joe an urgent massage. I mean, that's what it says here. The Joes raid Cobra Commander's slave mines because we couldn't close out the series without one more pointless scene where red lasers and blue lasers flash across the screen and don't actually hit anything. Cross Country finds the giant pile of garbage, which apparently is... One of Destro's less inspired ideas. Oh. I really thought they might be going somewhere with that. Cross Country gets his ass handed to him by Storm Shadow, who is presumably here because Cobra Commander suddenly realized, oh right, we have a ninja on our team. Then Cross Country clobbers him with his satchel full of reclaimed goodies, which surely brings shame to his dojo. Then Cobra Commander escapes and the Joes go home, and this doesn't feel like the lead into an epic celebrity-filled blockbuster extravaganza. More like the lead into a direct-to-video unstravaganza starring TV's Don Johnson. Well, I don't know where that thought even came from. <laughs> 